what we have got is what we call the seeker-friendly church. Amen? I told you all, me and my wife were somewhere where we was in a sanctuary of a church, and in the front of the sanctuary, they were worshiping and dancing and having a good time. And in the back of the sanctuary, not downstairs, not in the next room, in the back, there was a coffee bar, and people were playing, and you could eat food and snacks, and all that was inside the sanctuary. And we were trying to figure out why was that necessary. And what I began to realize is something happened in the early 90s. I want you all to get this that created what we now know as the mega church model. Amen? What had happened in the early 90s was there was certain pastors, but the, 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 the number one pastor that started, that, that kind of kicked this off or was or well known for it, is called Rick Warren. Amen? He wrote The Purpose Driven Life, and that sounds great. Amen? That's, ain't that good? You Purpose Driven in Life. Amen? But that's not what the book is really all about. Amen. So 30 million copies. And so what happened is people start to, it, it, was, it was what we call, it was part of the church growth movement. Amen. In other words, the, 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 the purpose driven life was all about uh, a growing church, putting numbers in the church. Amen. That's why we see, that's why you see these mega churches now, because they, a lot of them have copied the church, the, the purpose driven life model, which is a corporate America marketing plan. Say amen. In other words, corporate, in, in, in corporate America, if you, well, if you own the business, you cater to your clientele. Say amen. The better you cater to them, the better your business becomes. Come on, y'all. So, so uh, if, 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 I own, if, if I owned a, um, if I owned a shoe store and, and somebody up the street owned a shoe store and then we selling the same product, say amen, then in order for me to get more customers, I'm going to have to go out of my way to be more friendly and give the people more. So when you come in my shoe store, I may have two people waiting on you, pick you up, put you in a seat, rub your feet, say amen, to make sure you enjoy the experience because the experience keeps causing you to come back. Say amen. Not, you, may not have ne you may not necessarily uh, 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 um, like my shoes or even need them, but you love the experience. Say amen. So this model of corporate America building church has, has, has given a boom or a spike in people going to church. We got more people going to church, but we got less people converted. Now, now the problem with that corporate America model is you cannot, in order, when you teach about maturity, the people will leave. Why? Because they are there not based upon sacrifice. They wasn't taught sacrifice. They're there because you got a program for my son or my marriage. They're there because you have, you wrote out the red carpet, say amen, and they've taken out sin. They've, this is what they're teaching. They, there's nothing about sin. There's nothing about devils or, or say amen. They, they don't mention the word adultery or anything that would make people feel uncomfortable because we're selling a product. And it's not good for us to have people offended because we want them to buy the product. The seeker-friendly mega model seeks you. But you are really supposed to seek truth. But that church moves in a community and seeks you through a sensual or carnalness by becoming more like a circus to entertain folk than to teach. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm, hearing what I'm saying. So that's why when some of you all who are becoming mature start talking about Christ, and you hear people starting to talk about Christ, it's like an infantile, little young, like, like daycare-style understanding and you're trying to figure out, and they look at you like you almost crazy because you actually talking about living the book. While they just went to Golden Corral. They, they don't deal with overcoming sin. Say amen. Instead of dealing with sin or dealing with your dirty life, focus on your purpose. That's why we got so many spiritual whores. 
They didn't deal with getting over whoremongering. They just focused on preaching. When the Holy Spirit leads you to a season of purging, dealing with you to get you righteous, and that word sanctification, that word holiness becomes a part of your life, whereby then when you get up to do your ministry or fulfill your purpose, you don't bring shame. Oh, y'all don't want to talk about this. So that's no backside of the desert in these churches. That's no, that's no go through nothing. It's all about as soon as you come in, get busy with something. Come on, get in something. Come on, let's. Let's get you in your purpose because we got 100 programs. You ought to find something for, for somebody to do. You got 100 times. The church never closed. Say amen. So that's why I even said, I was talking with somebody, I said, man, look, I ain't doing all these programs. I'm tired of that stuff. I'm trying to fulfill all these desires. Got to get people to do something on Friday so they don't fornicate or fall out, go to the club. Look, man, go on to the club. Have me up in here sweating trying to keep you living for God. We got all these programs, spending up money and my family, wasting time with y'all. Could be home because I got to keep you in an atmosphere where you don't go see it. Come on, man. That's all those programs are. It's daycares. And, and people be bragging, oh, this church got programs for everything. Well, that's what's wrong. Man, we from the old school. We don't need no program. I live saved alone. I learned I don't go out on Friday and Saturday. I'm not out after dark. I don't need to work. I don't need to be in church to do this. We live right. That's my kids. We live right just because it's right. Y'all know what's wrong with Christians. They got to have activity because they come up on this purpose-driven uh, entertainment model that doesn't tell you to surrender your life. Say, man. So when you surrender your life, you surrender your sensual desires or your or the lusts of the flesh that drives you to do things. Once you surrender that, you find that, hey, I can sit still. Me and Jesus. You learn to go out and eat by yourself. You learn, I don't need all these friends, the people on the phone, the people calling me. Okay, the purpose-driven churches, they have changed Christianity into church growth focus only. And this is the, the herd mentality or the corral. Instead of individually dealing with people, there is a corral. Like Jesus deals with us individually. Say amen. Amen. It's a personal, I, I, that is one of the mysteries of Christ to me. How there are billions of people, but you can deal with each person individually. He won't say personal relationship. Well, these churches are not built upon a personal relationship with Christ. They're built upon allegiance to church. So now y'all should be getting a clue where this really came from. And I'll show you, I'll get down there. Y'all there? They sacrifice spirituality for numbers and through corporate marketing and non-offensive teaching. This is the atmosphere of the majority of the body of Christ, church salvation without a holy experience with Christ. Y'all got that? That means church without an experience with Christ. They are trained at the art of spectating, but never engaging. Spectating churches are, are, bo are booming while Bible teaching churches are struggling. Bible teaching churches teach discipleship, which is to engage. Jesus taught his disciples, whenever people met Christ, he taught them to engage the culture with the word. Engage, in, be, become active in overcoming the enemy. Become active in binding sin. Come on, y'all. Become active in seeking God for his spirit. Become active in living right. You have to engage. What well, this style of ministry does, uh, uh, doesn't teach people to engage. It teaches them to spectate. Now, church is attractive because the, the, the standard is so down here that I can come in with my ungenerated self, my unconverted mentality, my unrepentant heart, say amen, and get the spirituality 
without the true lifestyle. C come on, y'all. So what we are producing is sensual Christians. Sensuality whereby, listen, I get the high of church or religion, come on, but I still live the way I was living before. Are y'all there? So that's why it's hard to deal with sensual Christians because they'll put their titties in your face and, and talk about how good God is. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean it. I mean it. Come on. They, come on, y'all want to talk about it. Y'all didn't ever want to talk. They Christians, but putting, getting tattoos on their on they upper thighs and stuff. Y'all ain't there. Y'all there or not. Come on, y'all. Because, because, because spirituality is the shouting and the praising. Spirituality is the feeling. Spirituality is the knowledge. But it's not the lifestyle. So that's why you can become confused if you live right when you see people talking the same talk you talking. And you trying to figure out why do they get to do all of this stuff? Why, this is, why is it okay? And I'm over here convicted all the time. Y'all see, you know, man, I want to talk now. Are y'all there? Come on, y'all there? This is how homosexuals are singing and shouting with no conviction. This is how preachers are having sex with them with no conviction. Wearing muscle shirts and stuff. Why? Because they're preaching a fleshly gospel. I had to write a blog about that. There ain't no sexy holiness. Say amen. Y'all want to talk or not talk? So you go, now come on now. So you go to church and these bishops got their hair slick back better than women. Ten rings on. Come on now. I don't have no, I don't have no problem with looking nice, but there's, I see something. Well, the men in these churches are effeminate. They're soft and, and feel, almost flirtatious. Marriages are divorcing. Nobody's talking about that. Come on. It's sensual Christianity. Does anybody want to talk or not talk? Say amen. So let's so because marriage is not a good topic because half the people are divorced, let's have single conferences. Oh no, let's have women conferences. Because that's going to appeal to the sensual spirituality of women who are coming in but not being converted. This is the sort that's creeping. These sensual pastors, they creep into the houses of silly women, laden with sin, and give you a conference. And keep you ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. That now do you see why we're teaching a relationship with Christ is not popular? You're not going to be in no big conference preaching this stuff. It's going to mess with sales. 